In this video, I'm going to show you how to format an external drive on your Mac computer and talk about the three most important things you need to know when you're doing this. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, in this case, I'm going to demonstrate this using a brand new Samsung 870 QVO external drive. Of course, you could really apply this to any external SSD, hard disk drive, or USB thumb drive, almost anything you can think of. So to start, we're going to use an app known as Disk Utility built into Mac OS to format the drive. Now, there are a couple of different ways to get to Disk Utility. One method is to go to the magnifying glass or spotlight icon here, start typing disk utility, hit enter, and you will see it brought up on your Mac. The other option, of course, is to launch Finder in your main dock. Go to the Applications folder, navigate down to the Separate Utilities folder, and within there you will find the Disk Utility application as well. So right now in Disk Utility, I can see all of the current drives here on my Mac. This includes Macintosh HD and all of its associated volumes like data, and this external drive, AES Edit 1, that I have attached separately. Now that I've already taken inventory in terms of what's connected and showing within Disk Utility, I want to connect my new drive so I can format that. So in connecting the new drive to format here, all right, so now we can see the drive connected here within Disk Utility, as you can see along the left-hand side here. However, it is showing as uninitialized versus, say, the existing external SSD that looks to be completely formatted. Now, in truth, you may find the drive that you're going to erase or format has already been formatted, or it may be uninitialized, as you're seeing here. In either case, it's going to be the same action. All right, so in this case, we're going to click the Erase button, as you can see here. I'm going to name the drive, in this case, AES Media 3, because I already have a couple of these. All right, so now we're going to talk about the three most important things you need to know when formatting a drive, and we will start with number one, the partition scheme. So you're going to have the option of three different partition schemes, as you can see here, when formatting the drive, and by default, GUID partition map is what's going to be selected. In almost 99 plus percent of cases, you're going to want to leave this and choose GUID partition map. This is primarily because the Apple partition map is designed for a much, much older legacy version of Macs, say back in the power PC days. So unless you're working with a Mac from the mid 2000s or before, you would not want to choose this option. And while the master boot record partition scheme can work with a lot of different Windows computers. It is worth noting that the GUID partition map works with Windows machines as well if you do need cross compatibility, which we'll talk about more in a bit. So definitely GUID partition map is going to be the route to go. And given that, we are going to stick with that. But now let's talk about our second most important point, which is the format option that we can select. So here by default, it has picked APFS or the Apple File System. Now Apple File System is going to be a great choice under two different scenarios. Number one, if you want your external drive to only be read by Mac or computers running Mac OS. And number two, if you're using this with a Mac computer running any version of Mac OS that is 10.13 or High Sierra and above. Now, of course, you do have additional options with APFS, including the encrypted version here. Encryption on the drive is basically going to password protect it. So you'd be required to enter a password anytime you're connecting and needing to read or write information to the drive. This can be either a good thing for security or perhaps bad and obtrusive, depending on how you wish to use the drive. So something to keep in mind. And the second option here are the two case sensitive versions of APFS one with encryption and one without. The case sensitive option can be useful, say, if you want to have two files that can be the exact same name, but if they have a different capital letter somewhere, they would actually be considered as distinct files. Fun fact, by default, Mac OS is not case sensitive, so you probably don't need to choose this on your own unless you have a very specific reason to do so. But now let's consider a couple of other format situations. Say, if you are either trying to format an older spinning external hard disk drive that runs a bit slower, or you're trying to format a drive for use in different Mac OS versions that precede 10.13. In that case, you would probably want to select the Mac OS Extended Journal option or the case sensitive version of that same format type. However, more and more external drives and of course any USB thumb drive are going to be solid state. And again, most folks are running a relatively newer version of Mac OS at this point, one might assume, so you probably want to lean more towards APFS. However, I'm actually not going to use either of these options in formatting my own external drive. So let's talk about XFAT and MS-DOS FAT in terms of the two options that remain. Now, the key difference with both of these two remaining options is that they are cross-compatible for Windows. Meaning, if you need to read or write contents off of your drive, both on your Mac and different Windows computers, one of these options is going to be the route to go. However, because the MS-DOS file allocation format is significantly older, it has a couple of big caveats. Number one being you cannot have any file larger than four gigabytes on the drive itself. Because I'm a videographer and photographer, I often have large files that would not therefore fit on any drive formatted in this way. The second caveat here is that you cannot have any MS-DOS FAT drive formatted that is larger than two terabytes. And again, because this is an eight terabyte drive, this also would not work in that case. And so in this case, we're going to format this drive as XFAT. 
XFAT has neither of the caveats we mentioned before, and again, it's going to be very cross-compatible on a number of different Mac OS and Windows systems dating back years. So this is really the best option that I think for a lot of folks, if you're not sure if you're going to be using it on either just a Mac or different Windows computers, and it's going to probably allow for the most flexibility in connecting your external drive to different things. Now, before we click format, there is one other point to consider. You'll see here, if I click security options, we have the option to choose basically how and to what extent the drive is erased when being formatted. Now, by default, it is going to be selected as the fastest, but as we move this across, it is going to do a more intensive write operation in terms of erasing the contents of what's currently on the drive. And so I would say the key takeaway here is fastest is probably fine in most cases, but if you're actually trying to specifically erase, and I mean truly clear off whatever drive you're formatting, you may want to consider one of these other ones. Though bear in mind, it will reduce the likelihood and chance you can ever recover what was on that drive, and it might take ever so slightly longer to format the drive. In this case, I will flip it back to fastest because I think that is sufficient. We will hit OK, and we will now click Erase. And of course, we will let Disk Utility do its thing in formatting the drive. And once it has done that, it will show as being complete. Now, as you can see here in Disk Utility, we have an XFAT formatted drive, completely clear of space, other than just a little bit of default space used as expected. And so now our external drive is good to go. But just to round things off, we should talk about the third most important point, which is not just for a standard external drive format, but rather doing time machine backups. So here in system settings on my Mac, if I were to go over to General, go down to Time Machine, and then select the options here available. Now in this case, I already have an external drive set to use for Time Machine backups, but in either scenario, whether I did or didn't, if you want to use an external drive to do Time Machine backups, it is probably best to let Time Machine do the formatting of your drive for you than to do so yourself in Disk Utility. And to do that, you would basically select the plus icon here, select the drive that you want to use for Time Machine backups, and then click Set Up Disk. Once you select that, you have a much simpler set of options here, such as whether to encrypt your backups or not, and whether to impose a disk usage limit, which I would leave as none. You'll notice in this case, there's no partition scheme or format type to select because Time Machine is going to figure all of that out for you and match however your Mac is presently formatted on its main drive. And so that is how to format an external drive with your Mac and the three important things you need to know when doing so. Hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it has. I have a number of different Mac and tech related tutorials on the channel already that I would definitely encourage you to check out and there will be many more on the way. For now, that is all I have to say. So thanks for watching.